Good evening and welcome to this program. I am Catherine Mwangi. This is What's Your Story. You're tuned on to KTN Home. Thank you for making the time tonight. We have uh, what I consider to be one of the most inspiring stories we have brought to you uh, this year. This is the month of August, so it is our honor and privilege to be catalyzing tonight the story of the Chief Executive Officer of Safaricom PLC, Mr. Peter Ndegwa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice uh, to see you, Catherine. I'm so happy you made the time for us, sir, and you look extremely dapper. <laughs> happy to be here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's see, where do we start with a man like you? Because I even feel like this could run into two episodes, but let's see how it goes, because you're a busy man, eh? Mm -hmm. So um, your role coming into Safaricom, so we'll, we'll just see how to stitch this together. But your role coming into Safaricom, first mm. of all, such a high profile position, such a high role, you're leading one of Africa's most successful conglomerates and how did they find you how did how did they find you to say oh we're looking for this person <laughs> i think you should ask the board <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay. i suspect uh, uh, of course the uh, i was working in uh, in, in, in Diageo, as yes, you know yes uh, in uh, in continental europe mm -hmm. uh, where i was the the managing director yep. Uh, of uh, asset or markets mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. I had been to this country uh, working for the breweries, uh, for PwC and so on and yeah. so forth. So I was kind of in the, in the mix okay. in, 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 the, in that way. Yeah. But uh, I think in this instance, they, 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 they used uh, an external headhunter, mm. an international headhunter mm -hmm. who would look at Kenyans abroad, right. Kenyans locally and so on and so forth. Yeah. I would assume that's the... The way they would have gone g gone about it, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, fine through headhunters. Yeah. So okay, that 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 works. If you don't know how yeah. headhunters work, just you know, just YouTube <laughs> that. Eh? We don't have time to go into that. Yes. Uh, but so you were serving at mm -hmm. a very high level as well, and we'll come mm -hmm. to you know how your career has grown, you mm -hmm. know, from level to level. Yeah. And and you passed all the interviews required for this role. Yeah. And then um, you joined. So first you had been promoted at Dajo, uh, and then a year later. Safaricom came calling, and of course you said yes, and a year later, you joined Safaricom. Um, when you walked into this position, the first day, uh, you walked into the Safaricom house. I think that's what you call the building, mm -hmm. right? Yes, what? HQ1. Oh, oh, <laughs> HQ1, eh? Yes, yes. So is that two and three? Yes, there is two oh. and three, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I'm getting to We are a large this. company. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Six, okay. 6,000 people. 6,000? That's correct. Who? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So mm -hmm. the first day you walked in there, mm -hmm. what was that feeling? Can you recall the feeling? So first of all, I'll, I'll disappoint you because I joined on the 1st of April 2020. In the middle of COVID, uh, lockdown had been declared. Uh, so I was actually on Zoom uh, talking to my team. And um, so my, my actual first experience uh, was after... Uh, after COVID uh, restrictions were, uh, were ah, actually lifted. loosened yes. or, 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 li or lifted. Yeah. Uh, and di I, did, I didn't see some of my team members until two, three months in. Oh. Uh, because of course, I had to go through my induction online. Uh, of course, I knew lots of uh, my, uh, my team. Yeah. Uh, but physically, I met uh, some of them three, uh, two to three months in. Wow, so quite different from yeah, how it has different. been, right? So yes. was that difficult getting to know people virtually? It was, mm. it was. Uh, you, you, it's already, uh, you know, when you're managing transitions mm. and the uh, job uh, movements like this ones are, are major transitions in yeah. life. Uh, so you want to be physically present yeah. together, you know, yes. doing this interview yeah. face to face is very different from doing it uh, over the phone. Yeah. Um, but uh, you have to adapt. Uh, if there's a crisis, you have you have to adapt. Luckily for me, I had worked in Europe for quite a while. I was also always used to uh, interacting with some of my team members uh, on Zoom okay. uh, because I was looking for uh, after a region. Yes. Uh, and although I used to visit uh, some of those markets uh, to do uh, in-depth market visits, yeah. uh, most of the meetings were actually online. But I, I realized my team struggled with it uh, mm. because everyone... I was used to walking along the corridors, you know, seeing yeah. how people are feeling. Yeah. But um, like everyone else, we had to adjust uh, and adapt. 
the, one of the benefits actually of uh, joining during COVID is we are meeting every day uh, because we had to support the country, uh, we had to keep the country connected, uh, we had to expand network uh, at home, uh, on mobile. Oh, yeah. uh, so there was a lot that we were interacting yeah. uh, just to resolve, to, um, to, to ensure that things went quickly. Yeah. And also we were supporting the government with a care center. Yes. Uh, so, you know, all these health calls, people calling in to say, how, how, what do I do with this COVID mm. stuff? So um, it was, it, in a way, mm -hmm. in, a, in a weird way, it, it also enabled <laughs> the, the actual uh, onboarding to be quicker. Yes. Uh, because uh, during a crisis, people get to to the bottom of issues yes. rather than kind of the taking of the you day. through the, the yes. politics of the day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. which is one of the things one has yeah. to be conscious of in, yes. in corporate life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I see what you mean because then yeah. it was, there was a national well there was a global crisis, not even just national crisis, and then your company being what it, what it is in this region, especially in this country. Mm -hmm all the focus and the concentration yeah. is there. So the people have no room for a lot of time-wasting conversations. It's work, work, work. And then finally, three, four months later, you had to meet them. But just let me take you back a bit to, you finally got the letter that says you've been appointed as yeah. the CEO of yeah. Safaricom PLC. Yeah. And how did you then, you know, um, prepare emotionally, spiritually, mentally uh, for this role? So I had been on secondment uh, in Diageo. So mm -hmm. I started uh, my Diageo career with East Africa Breweries, mm -hmm. and we can talk about that yes. uh, yeah, separately. Yeah, we'll come there, yes. Uh, went into West Africa for seven years. Mm -hmm. I had been in Europe for about two years. So I knew at one point I will need to return to Kenya. Uh, Kenya is my home country. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you kind of think, what type of roles would I mm. uh, would uh, would I uh, go into? Mm. And uh, I'd already been very senior in Diageo. Yes. So Safaricom was probably the only one of the only companies or a number of companies that I would have been able to join. Yeah. Uh, because my next role would have been leading a, even a bigger region. Yes. And 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 therefore it was a sense of pride to be coming back to lead the most successful business. Uh, but also one that impacts society in a very significant mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've we learned a lot. Uh, this was my second uh, outing south of Kenya. Yeah. Uh, the first one was when, when I was at PwC yes. in the UK. Yes. Uh, you learn a lot. You pick up so much. Then it's about now coming back to serve your country, uh, being involved in a company that is very commercially successful, but also in, an, in a sector that mm. is going to shape the future. Yes. Uh, of business, yes. so digital is shaping the future of individuals. How we live, how we uh, how we talk, how we socialize, and yeah. so on. Everything. But also on the business side, mm. and also the, from a society perspective. So in getting this role, uh, I, I was conscious it's going to be a big transition. First of all, for family, we had been away for nine years. Mm. Uh, my wife coming back with uh, I have one son, him settling back into school, uh, and and I'll tell you about it. Yes. He, he was. He was not willing to move. <laughs> uh, he was already uh, slightly over ten years, yeah. so they were get He was getting into that stage where movement, mm. uh, because he's already formed friends mm. and so on. Um, so family is the first thing you have to settle. If you if a family is not settled, then you you, you basically don't have yeah. a, a, a grounding. Yes. The second is even if I was coming back to my home country, mm -hmm. I was conscious that things have moved on. Nine mm. years is a long time. Uh, you have to look for a house. You have to all this all this stuff we take for granted, and people think you know when you are coming back to settle in your home country, it's not as yeah. there is no big transition, yeah, but it is. It is. And then and then I was also transitioning sector, so I was moving mm. from a consumer goods business to a to a, a telecommunication financial services yes. area. Uh, so so that was it. Uh, from a CEO perspective, I had been CEO for almost uh, uh, ten years, yeah. so th therefore that settling was not as as, as big. So. You, I always have to. I always say you have to think about the dimensions of mm. transition that you are making. So in that way, it was family, it was country, mm. it was sector, mm -hmm. and therefore had to consciously think about that. But also emotionally, yes, this is a law that uh, you're on the grid all the time. Yes. If I may use that yes. term. Uh, everyone wants to. If you if you think about our football managers, mm -hmm. everyone wants to tell you which team to. To, to, to line up, uh, yeah. who should be your substitute yeah. and so on and yeah. so forth. So how you manage 
the public perception is also important. Luckily yeah. for me, yeah. COVID showed up. <laughs> so there was a, a, a bit of uh, cover yes. for me to settle in yeah. without a lot of attention, mm. uh, which, was, which was helpful. Mm. But uh, in a way, um, it is a big responsibility. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, you are accountable for a large business. Mm. You are accountable for big decisions that impact the country. Yes. And uh, everyday life, you know, we have 32 million M-Pesa customers, uh, close to 40 million GSM customers. So every adult yeah. uh, interacts with one of our products or brands. Yes, every day. Every day. Every day. That is a you, you, it's a sense of responsibility, mm. but also sense of opportunity mm -hmm. to serve, uh, to, uh, to be closer to the things that are important, you know, yeah. uh, the community. Yes. Um, because as you know, Safaricom has two foundations, Safaricom Foundation yeah. and M-Pesa. But even if you leave aside the foundations, yeah. which yeah. is a lot of work we do with community, yeah. the actual commercial impact you have on people's daily lives and businesses is material, yeah. uh, significant. But also shaping big agenda. Uh, so whether that's COVID in the way that we supported government and worked with Kenya to keep it connected, mm. whether it is uh, stuff like drought, which I have been involved and I was chair, yeah. I have been chair of the drought steering committee. Yeah. Whether it is uh, digitization, you know, we were involved and actually led as part of a consortium of, uh, of providers with government on the Hustler Fund mm -hmm. uh, launch. So, so generally you can't avoid being on the grid. No. Um, so we'll talk about social media mm -hmm. and so on, and people mm -hmm. will have views mm -hmm. about how you are managing, mm -hmm. but you have to filter that mm. in the context of what you want to do. Yes, what your assignment and purpose yeah, is at yeah. that time. And you know yeah. something else, uh, uh, just remember it, mm -hmm. um, there was lots of excitement uh, with your joining Safaricom because you're the first Kenyan at that position. So That's everyone correct. was like, who? Who is this Kenyan? I mean, will they make it? <laughs> why, why haven't they gone for someone from the West? Yes. Which Kenyan? And yes. then, you know, yes. people are you know, throwing around a few names, yes. local names mm -hmm. that we are exposed to. But they're like, who's Peter? Mm. So who's Peter? Yeah. So of course you knew that was happening. Yes. And, and what was your, re re not response, because you didn't respond. Yes. I, I, what I think about you is you just get into the work. Yeah. As they're talking, mm -hmm. your fruit will be speaking for you. Y yeah. But that time when the whole nation literally on social media was like, and who's this Peter Ndegwa? Who's yes. this Peter Ndegwa? Uh, what was happening in your, in your own social circle? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I have to say, so I was on LinkedIn. The, yeah. The, the, the number of uh, hits that day. I think it was like 10,000 or whatever the number yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, or, or much more than that. I can't remember. Yeah. But, but it was a huge number. Mm. Then uh, I, had, um, I had been on Facebook and all that. I, t I, I, I made those private <laughs> <laughs> just so that I could avoid all the drama yeah. and, and, and trying to respond to that. Yeah. But, um, uh, but if, you, if you talk about who this Pitandegua was, mm. I knew that because I had been away for, for nine years, there are people who will know me, in the, especially in the business circles, yes. so I had been in the system long enough, yeah. but the public generally uh, would, would not know mm. me. And then people say, oh yeah, the shoes, you mm. have big shoes, uh, bobs, uh, yeah. lead bobs, uh, and, and also Michael. Yeah. Then when, when I was asked that question, I said, which shoes? <laughs> because I said, look, this is not about the leaders, and I, I really huge respect for the leaders who had been running Safaricom for a long time. You always have to respect what you find. Mm. And, uh, but you have to shape the future you want to create. Yes, yes. And uh, so I said, I'm going to be Peter Ndekwa. Uh, this is my background. People are surprised. And even you used, Catherine, you said local versus uh, yes. uh, uh, for, foreign. Mm -hmm. um, but as kind of Kenyan, uh, grown up here, uh, schooled here, uh, went through a career journey uh, that uh, we, we can talk about. Yes. But really returning back uh, to utilize what I've learned. Uh, and international exposure is a yeah. very important component of being able to lead in a very wide way. Yes. Um, ability to understand uh, complexity, mm. uh, because this business is very complex. Yeah. The industry is complex. The interactions with stakeholders is complex. But in terms of what was happening, mm -hmm. so of course I had to, re to realize that my family now will become public. 
Uh, I remember that uh, one of the first pictures that showed up uh, on Nation was my wife's. Uh, in one of the uh, one of the pictures she had yeah. been taken, luckily it was a very nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, and, uh, and because I, for some reason, they, they, because they had shut my some of my social media, yes. they couldn't find. Mm. So they went to my wife's one. Oh my God! And um, and I think so. So they found a few pictures that that's the one that they put put on the as headline. Yeah. Um, and I think she had written uh, something about about acknowledging and recognizing mm. and uh, congratulating me on yes. this role. That's what showed up in the newspapers. Yeah. So in a way, at a social level, mm -hmm. I'm generally uh, not very high pu highly public. Um, so I tried to manage it that way. Mm. But eventually, I had to also talk to the media, yes. which, which was, you know, you have to be, I've always been very confident about yeah. what I am about, yeah. what I stand for, my values, and, um, and also been very successful mm. as a senior leader for a very long time. Yes. And, um, and uh, quite grounded. Yes. So therefore, uh, that's what I was uh, going to, to focus on. Yes. Rather than the, the drama and the hype and, yeah, the and everything. Around. Yes. But also acknowledging mm. that the public has a right to know who you are. That's it. And connecting and saying, look, this is the person I yeah. am. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I think, my first interview with, the, I think it was with one of the uh, media houses. Okay. And they asked me, who is this Peter mm -hmm. so, so I had to, of course, talk, <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I like mm -hmm. something you said there mm. about, um, so I know everyone, you know, most people are asking, uh, you're going in to fill some really huge shoes yeah. uh, of, you know, the late Bob and, 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 Michael, who was the interim at that mm -hmm. time, and and I like what you said there, whose shoes? Yes. You know, because you're, you're coming in with your shoes, mm -hmm. but that does not mean that you don't pay homage to the ones that you found. Yeah. But then you're building your own path. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, and also, um, you know, now finding the team at Safaricom. So you, of course, you have management, and you just said to me you have 6,000 uh, staff. Members of staff. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So while still respecting the work that you found had been established mm -hmm. by the previous management team and the staff there, how then do you bring in your own vision into running this business? How do you how do you how do you make a mark? Do you even think of making a mark at the start? <laughs> oh. Yes, I, I think th so, so. First of all, the when you when you are getting through and being interviewed. You, you'll understand what the company is about. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, quite conscious mm. that this company, uh, the stature of Safaricom, uh, what it had been able to deliver for this country yeah. has been very significant. Yes. The impact on society. So it's almost, first of all, understanding uh, the heritage of the company mm. and what it has been uh, and what you are inheriting. That's yes. the first thing that you have to do, yeah. and, I, and I, I needed to be. And then secondly, understanding the path or the future that the board was thinking about. Mm. And uh, because stakeholders, you know, uh, so you have the government as one of the stakeholders mm -hmm. who is 35% stake. You have uh, Vodafone mm -hmm. uh, who owns about 40%, and you have the public. Right. So there are institutional uh, expectations yes. of those stakeholders. Yeah. Then there's the public expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you also have a business to run. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I had been CEO since 2011. Mm -hmm. So I knew what a CEO role is about. Uh, you come in, <laughs> you find out what's going on. Uh, you, you, you assess your team. Yeah. You assess mm -hmm. the, where the current strategy, what is happening. Then you start uh, charting the, fu the, 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 the path for the future. Right. And secondly, remember, I also came in when there was a crisis. Yes. So it is also about utilizing the capacity of the company to deal and solve the crisis. And part of that is also understanding what the company is about. And, uh, and then the, I said that one of the transitions was sector. Mm -hmm. So it's also starting to research, uh, talk to people who understand this sector, which is the telecommunication sector, and, and understanding the ingredients of mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. and how you broaden those ingredients of success. And then that allows you, because you can't start shaping the future in on day one, mm -mm. you need to give yourself at least six months to learn the company, uh, to, uh, to understand the culture, yeah. to understand the team and the strengths the company has. Mm. And its purpose. Mm. 
purpose of transforming lives as a core ingredient yeah. of what Safaricom is. Yeah. And then now start to say, what are the opportunities for the future? What's the stage of this company in terms of development? And where do we take it now into the future? I've always, I had always been known for transforming companies, okay. challenging status quo, really thinking uh, and creating uh, a path for the future. Mm. So I was conscious, even as we dealt with the crisis, mm -hmm. we had to start to shape uh, the future. So in 2020, during the crisis, we shaped the 2025 vision for the company, uh, which is to be a purpose-led technology company. That's yes. when we sh we broadened what we wanted to be. Yeah. So beyond being a telecom, uh, which has been very successful yes. and also a successful mobile money business, how do we broaden it so that we use uh, technology mm. to shape how people uh, get services, how you digitize the, the both the public but also private sector, uh, but also how you we broaden what we are able to deliver uh, for, for our consumers but also business, including government. Mm. Uh, and uh, I know mobile. I mean, uh, MPS has always been very successful. People are saying, so how do you how do you make it more successful? And yeah. I kind of said, we are only in primarily in payments. Uh -huh. uh, we had also gone into credit. We can broaden credit in a significant way. You can really explode payments because. A lot of our, business, our country is still cash. You've seen government really going to cashless. Um, we can go into wealth, into savings, into insurance. So the financial services spectrum, and in my early life, when I worked for, for, for PwC, yes. I did a lot of work in financial services. Yes. The financial services spectrum, and when you look at the penetration of financial services, so although inclusion had, Im had improved, financial security, financial health of people Insurance penetration is only 2% in this country. Uh, savings is still very low. People still mm. buy land. Mm. and So people don't save in liquid assets, which are very important. Uh, so, so therefore, it is also saying, how do we broaden what um, the kind of product set that, you, that, we, uh, that we have? How do we broaden it also to enterprise, mm. small business, government? But also, how do we use digital and technology to enable experience and user journeys to be right? Like on the, on the Hustler Fund, mm -hmm. it took us seven weeks. So we have to say, if you're transitioning from a telecom company, how do you create an environment where you can be a technology company? We went from traditional way of running business in departments to agile. Okay. So creating s small groups of teams that combine commercial, and technology teams. But actually, if you look at the best, the most successful uh, technology companies in the world, they, 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 they run in Agile, mm -hmm. where you run in what is called sprints. Mm -hmm. Two-week sprints to say, if there's an issue like, say, uh, you want accessible credit, mm -hmm. if I use Hustler Fund as mm -hmm. an example, you have a prototype and a, a minimum viable product within a, a month at most. You have mm -hmm. the technology solution, you have the user journeys defined, you have the, uh, the kind of monetization way, the way you kind of make money or, yeah. or, or, or the, how it will cost you. Yeah. And then because you have combined commercial and technical skills, you don't have to go across departments and coordinate that. And they come up with the solutions and, and then they keep improving the solutions until it is, it is launched. And then even after launch, you keep getting uh, feedback from customers and, and then you keep improving it. And uh, until you, it becomes a, a perfect solution. So we had to convert our business from kind of traditional to agile. And then that allowed us to then now start to go to market quicker, to be more customer centric, uh, to pay attention to the use cases that are more, uh, that, that will make a difference, both on the consumer and also enterprise side. Mm. We have had the secrets of Safaricom success, so we have to take a short commercial break. No problem. As you take your sugarless you. black tea. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so we'll be back after the break, and of course, I know we've dealt with Safaricom and the secrets that you know uh, make this conglomerate successful. So, as a business owner watching that, as a leader in your own company, I, I know you're gleaning because I for sure am. I mean, especially that. Um, that agile, those agile teams, the tribes, the agile tribes, that's, that's woo. But we go for a break, right back, we come back with Peter's story of what kind of a young man was he growing up? Um, what were his passions? What were his dreams? Is he living his dream? And of course, there's 
that one big question I have to ask, what's on the other side of the opulence, the abundance, the big name, the big title? So all of that right after the break. Welcome back. It's What's Your Story. We are taping here from the Gem Suites Hotel and Luxury Apartments in Riverside. Again, grateful to the management for giving us the space to bring you What's Your Story from. Tonight, an invigorating conversation. Remember I said that to you at the start of the show. This was going to be invigorating. So business people, you've had your day in paradise, so to speak. We are having a conversation with the Chief Executive Officer of Safaricom PLC. This is Africa's largest your competition will disagree but no we have we are saying it <laughs> yeah too <laughs> yeah, yeah it is it is this it is the most profitable so far in africa and i don't see that going changing anytime soon but uh, a conversation with the ceo mr peter ndegwa thank you so much again for availing time during such a busy week so you've just shared mm. a very core element of what has made the business successful when i hear no longer are you working through departments, but just small teams? You call them what, sprints? Uh, agile. Agile. Agile teams. Agile teams. So like the like payments. Yes. So if you think about financial services like M-Pesa, yeah. you'd have a payments tribe. These guys are only going to focus on how do we enable payments for consumers, but also businesses to come alive. Right. Then there will be probably a credit, uh, so, so credit propositions new products uh, or, or, or actually digital solutions. Mm. Uh, if you think about uh, the GSM side, which mm -hmm. is the connectivity side, you'll have a, a mobile data, a fixed business, which is the home side. An enterprise, on the enterprise side, you might have internet of things and IoT, uh, sorry, internet mm. of things and ICT mm -hmm. as a product tribe. Mm. So those, those tribes, they tribes. are called tribes, tribes. In, an agile, in an agile world. Mm -hmm. And then within those, you have specific roles that people are playing. Mm -hmm. You have a product person, you have a, 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 commercial. A, a, a commercial person. Uh, but what, what the, everyone in that uh, team brings is craft. Mm. It could be a, a, a user journey expert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be a product uh, development expert. Hmm. Uh, it could be a risk expert on the cyber side, yeah. but they all bring uh, coherence in the way that products are created from concept to launch. Yes, and uh, and you don't have to then go in and uh, and talk about uh, bringing other teams, and then the, and the, and then you work also with the providers uh, and partners in the same agile way. Mm -hmm. um, so that that has been one of the biggest change. Okay. Um, okay. wow. Then, of course, there are other areas, especially around culture, yes. where we have. So we've we've paid. To, so we there is something we call Safaricom spirit. Uh -huh. So there are four elements uh, of what. Uh, so I talked I talked about purpose of Safaricom, mm. which is transform lives. Mm -hmm. But there are four elements of our spirit. One is purpose. So we've always been about going beyond commercial objectives to impact society. Mm -hmm. So even in creating the future, we have to say. How do we improve society? Mm. The second is innovation. We've always been an innovative company. Yeah. So those two are very strong, and I was going to build on that. Yes. The, the, the other two, which is areas I felt uh, could be improved, is mm -hmm. customer-centric. Um, we, although Safaricom is large, uh, we still had a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. Our data was, uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, our products are more complicated. Mm -hmm. So customer-centric, in fact, our first mission uh, or our first year objective was how do we how do we create a, a customer obsessed digital fast organization as the foundation for now building to a purpose led technology yes. company. Then the final one is collaboration. Uh -huh. Why we created Agile is so that we 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 had, we remove silos mm. because people are working and they, those silos create competition. Uh, but the customer doesn't doesn't uh, understand those silos. Yeah. They, they know about Safaricom, yeah. and um, so so the biggest areas of of of, of shifts on our culture mm. were the customer centricity and the collaboration, which we went through uh, on the agile path. Mm -hmm. When you combine it with an innovation an innovation machine, which Safaricom is, and a purpose driven organization, then you create you kind of start to build yeah. all the four elements in a way that is more sustainable and gets closer to, mm. our, to our vision. 
Wow, so you've just shared the secret of Safaricom <laughs> success, basically. And, and in the same breath, you yes. said to us, there's no competition. You really do not have competition. So the only thing you have to do is innovate. Um, what? No, I didn't say there's no competition. No, I, that's what I have. <laughs> what, what I said is there's no competitions amongst departments. Yes. So, so previously, the consumer business, or everyone wants to shine when you, are in, you have departments, the silos. Yeah. But when you now go into Agile, you have teams that want to serve the customer and the society. Uh -huh. So there is less internal competition. I, I didn't that. say I got that. I didn't say there's no competition <laughs> externally. <laughs> but Peter, who is yeah. your competition anyway? Tell me. You see, uh -huh. you see Catherine, the the way companies fall over mm -hmm. is you become large, mm -hmm. you get a bit sleepy, <laughs> uh, you get uh, complacent. Right. Because you don't think there's competition. Mm -hmm. But competition may not be your traditional. So, of course, we have traditional competitors. Airtel, still, we, uh, our customer share is still is two-thirds. So a third of the, uh, of the customers are with Airtel and Telecom Kenya. Okay. So that's number one. Mm. Uh, the second is, the, on the fintech side, mm -hmm. which is the mobile money side, if you, if you think about financial services as the sphere that we are, Okay. We, we, are, we are playing mm -hmm. in. There's traditional competitors, which most of the time we use them as partners, yes. uh, like ah. the banks, because we, we use them for credit. We we'll go to insurers for, for the wealth management uh, pieces that we are doing and the insurance products. Because so we have, we have decided to work with them, not as competitors, but as partners. But a fintech mm -hmm. uh, area uh, in a digital world, mm -hmm. Competition can come from in, uh, anywhere. Mm. You have all these digital lenders. Uh, you have suppliers of uh, home home connections mm -hmm. that you probably don't know. I uh, don't know their names, <laughs> Catherine. So, so uh, small competitors mm -hmm. uh, start attacking you from small uh, the edges. Right. Uh, of of uh, it's it's like if if you are if you are a big elephant, you uh -huh. need to know what is hitting you from oh. where. So. It is very important that we, that's why we introduce Agile, hmm. that we, although we are big, we are still Agile and go to market Cut quicker. Back. Yeah. So that we are always ahead. Yeah. So for example, like during COVID, we accelerated our rollout of 4G everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we are conscious that even if we roll out 4G, which is now 97%, we don't have handsets. People, st a third, two thirds of the people still don't have 4G handsets. Mm. So you can have the connectivity, but you still have a Mulikam Wizi. Yeah. So that's the reason why we are going for uh, uh, products like Lipam Dogo Mdogo, mm -hmm. uh, pay as you go, device financing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are involved with the local assembly mm -hmm. of uh, 4G phones. So, so that, so there, in, in, any, in any business, however large it is, there is always opportunity mm. to give more service, better service, uh, and actually, talking about better service, mm -hmm. if you looked at what we, what we, how we measure whether customers love us, mm -hmm. is net promoter score. At the time when I came into, we were number three. Okay. Although we are the largest. Yeah. So we had to say what's the pathway to number one. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, the, the, our price point, we were premium price, so we've reduced our data price by 70% okay. in the past three years. Yeah. We've reduced our voice by, uh, price by around 45%. So we have actually been Although we've been growing, people say, oh, the business has not been growing massively. We have actually tripled the amount of data that is used in the past three years, mobile data. We have doubled, wow. we have doubled the value of transactions that go through M-Pesa. Mm -hmm. We've doubled the agent base, you know, the mobile, the, mm -hmm. the M-Pesa base. We've tripled the number of Lipa and M-Pesa merchants in the past three years. So although that doesn't show up in the revenue growth because we've reduced price by mm. more than 50%. Yeah. Mm. So that, but you have a much healthier business, uh, much more digitized yeah. uh, ecosystem that you can leverage on. So if you are building on that and you bring in savings products or insurance products or other products, home products and so on, you're adding onto our already a strong base. If I give you an example, on m mm -hmm. before COVID, uh, just around the time I came, yeah. Um, the number of what we call uh, chargeable transactions, so customers who will uh, pay for a transaction, right. was 9 to 10 per customer per month. Okay. Today is 26. 
in three years only. Yeah. So that, so the actual ecosystem and business is very healthy. And now you have the, a broader, uh, more healthier business to build, to build on. Yeah. So as, you, as we think about, so that's why if, even as we were talking about like the Hustler Fund, mm. we can, uh, the reason why we're able to do it very quickly, we already had a credit ecosystem, mm. more what we call multi-tenant. Mm. So we can just add Hustler on the side of other credit propositions that are digital in nature. The user journeys have been configured and therefore developing a product become much more straightforward. Yes. But also delivery, which is the care side. Yes. I told you we have 6,000 yes. people. Um, out of that 6,000, about two thirds mm -hmm. are involved in one way or another in the front line. Mm. The care is about a third, so like the call center, the shops, and also the people we call the channel, mm -hmm. which is the front line sales people. So about two thirds of our people, of those 6,000, are people who talk to customers every day. And people sometimes don't realize it's, it's not the head office, you know, yeah. it's not the HQ1 yeah. that is important. <laughs> yeah. It's those guys out there. Yeah. And then we have an ecosystem of partners. Agents have moved from 150 to 300,000. Yeah. 300 distribution points. Um, Lipana and Pesa merchants have moved from 170 to 600,000. Dealers are 4,600, so 4,300. So we utilize the third party ecosystem. This is why we say mm. we impact about a million people in terms of jobs. Because when you think about agents, 300,000 agents, even if you're employing two people, that's yeah. 600,000 yeah. people. Yeah. So it's not difficult to see how you'd employ a million people within our, within our ecosystem indirectly wow. uh, beyond the 6,000 people that we employ mm. directly. So, wow, those are mind-blowing numbers. Mm -hmm. So I hear about, you know, partnerships and collaborations, mm -hmm. especially third-party, yeah. you know, players in the different sectors. I hear about your passion for being a very strong customer-centric mm -hmm. organization. So let's, let's look internally now, yeah. the staff. Mm -hmm. How do you keep or rather have a staff that's inspired and motivated? Yeah, so... At the end of the day, one thing that I've learned, I said uh, I, will, I became CEO mm -hmm. in 2011. Mm -hmm. Actually, my, CEO, my first CEO role was in Ghana, oh, uh, leading the, the, the Guinness business in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And what I have learned is the first ingredients you have to get right is the people. Mm -hmm. First of all, your team, your direct team. So recruit mm -hmm. the best uh, people so that then you are able to unleash the organization to, to be the best it can. Right. And don't be afraid. You know, sometimes, you know, you recruit people who don't challenge you and all that mm. stuff. I will always recruit people who are great in their roles. Yes. And in my past, I have been in finance, in strategy, in sales. So you need to avoid being the person who makes decisions for those functions and recruit the best functional experts in those roles or commercial experts in, or even technology experts. Right. And I was also coming into a sector in some areas that I don't know, like the technology side. Mm -hmm. I, was f I was not as, fa as familiar. So recruit subject matter experts in those roles. And then create an organization and a culture where people can bring, uh, can be, uh, can, uh, bring their best. Mm. This is why I talked about Safaricom culture. Right. Uh, purpose is very important, always reminding people we are all about serving society. We are not just a utility. Yeah. You know, huh. we go beyond availing that network. Mm. We offer services that impact lives in, in different ways. We yes. also have foundations that reinforce that. You have innovation. So you keep innovating so that you create new mm. ways of delivering uh, a value Service, to customers. Yes. Yeah. Um, collaboration. So enable staff mm -hmm. to feel they are in an environment where they can co-create, bring their innovation flair and collaborate to create products that they are proud about. And, and, then, and, then, and then of course the customer centricity, yes. which is the foundation. This is why I said the first year yeah. was about embedding a, a customer obsessed digital first organization. And then we have, in the same way that we, we talk to customers externally, a, a net promoter score, which mm -hmm. is the external measure of how customers think about. Mm -hmm. We also have an internal measure. We call it SEMA survey. Okay. So SEMA to us uh -huh. about the things that are important to you. So we ask a set of questions. And you know, because you're asking such a large number of people, the numbers don't lie. Mm. So you'll know, wow. you know whether people are connecting to your, to your, 
to your purpose, yes. which is transforming life, yes. to your spirit, the understanding of spirit, to the vision you are creating. Uh, and then now you, you layer it down to the, the elements of that. And then you talk about the manager, uh, how, how are they interacting with yeah. their manager. Would they promote or would they recommend their manager to another person? Ah. So the manager score, a leadership index score, some, uh, we measure things like psychological safety. Are you allowed to be yourself? And uh, uh, we also measure things like uh, how customer centric we are and all those things. So the customer, I mean, the, and we take the same as service serious and it's even reviewed at the board level. So if you get very poor scores, that's <laughs> not a good thing from a performance perspective, even for the CEO. Yeah. <coughs> and, um, and then we also know which departments then are leading their teams better, mm. which are not, uh, mm. which areas should we... Uh, Focus. Yes, and then we, we, have a, we have a list of the things that uh, have not, uh, that have scored low, and then we, we work on it. But it's also about uh, inspiring the organization for the people to feel we have a future. It's about creating a sense of this future, this purpose, mm -hmm. and, uh, and connecting, actually, the, the, highest, the highest item the, uh, well, the, the, the highest rated item is uh, they understand the purpose of the organization, yeah. uh, they're inspired by the vision, yeah. and, and the sense of mission uh, of the organization. Right. And, um, and then the, the rest are now d depending on, uh, so like my direct reports will also give me feedback, so I'll have a manager score, yeah. And, uh, and, and it is not, uh, you see, it's, it's not just whether you are very nice to people. Yeah. It's whether you bring the best out of them. Out of them. Yeah. So it's not, ah. it, is, it, is, it is about how you lead. So the leadership aspect are very important. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and if, if you don't cultivate and get real feedback coming back, yeah. it will show up in different ways, in performance uh, issues, in the, the way we deliver services yeah. to customers. Yeah. Because uh, our people are our best ambassadors. Yes. And uh, we, have, we, have, we have proud people in Safaricom, awesome. but we also have to ensure they are also customer-centric, yes. uh, innovative, yes. you know, all those, all those elements. The agile journey yeah. was not easy. Yeah? It wasn't easy. Okay. <coughs> because people don't like change. Yeah. This is a successful organization. Why are you change it? Mm. Why bother? Mm -hmm. If it's not broken, yes, why it's, fix it? Yes, if it's not broken, they kind of say, look, it's important to change in peacetime rather than waiting for when there's war. There's war. Like I remember we started a program we were calling productivity. Mm -hmm. Then people say, oh yeah, Peter is reducing costs. <laughs> <coughs> and I said, if you think about costs, if we have a lot of waste, who pays for that waste? Customers. So if we reduce costs, we don't want more profit. We want to reduce price. That's why we have been able to, to reduce wow. prices. And, oh. But people kind of relate with productivity from a cost perspective. Mm -hmm. But now this year is when they are saying, actually now we see, because this year the cost uh, increase in because of uh, energy costs, yeah. diesel, currency. Yeah. <coughs> if, if, we, if we hadn't started the journey mm. two, three years ago, mm. we would have been forced to make decisions that are more uh, uh, unpalatable. So it's good to actually make tough decisions in peacetime yeah. when you are doing well. Yes. Uh, because when uh, uh, the, it is easier to digest mm. the bad news eh? in, mm -hmm. in, in, in good times. Yes. <coughs> it's, it's more difficult yes. when, uh, when, when life is tough. Such so, brilliance. Mm. Such brilliance. Large family. Okay. Uh, second born of nine children. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! It's a nine, uh, so so large family. In fact, I asked my mom, "How did you uh, <laughs> cope uh, which, compared with my one child?" <laughs> Life is a long race. It's a marathon. It's not. Uh, it's not a sprint. So there will be ups and downs. Mm. But actually, in the context of life, one year, one, two years, or a disappointment here and there, doesn't make a big difference as mm. long as you are. You have your sights on something you want to do, yeah. that you, you, you have the resilience to, to hang on. Thank you so much for watching What's Your Story tonight. As always, we are gratified that you made the time 
I personally know that it has been worthwhile for you. As a business leader, I know you have gleaned secrets of what keeps Safaricom up on the up and up. Profitable, making their customers happy and making as well their internal staff happy. I'm Catherine Mwangi, gratified you made the time again to tune in tonight. Until next week, ciao, God bless. Gem Suites Hotel and Luxury Service Departments currently boasts two properties within Kenya. Gem Suites State House Crescent, set in the exclusive State House neighborhood, comprises of 34 well-appointed apartments and Gem Suites Riverside, set up in a secure, private and tranquil setting. In the upscale Riverside neighborhood with 98 luxuriously appointed full-service one- and two-bedroom apartments, superior hotel rooms and presidential penthouses.